Relentless rain, the lightning, thunder, and storms finally letting up, but it's not over just yet. More rain on the radar moving in right now. Breaking now, the Coast Guard calling in backup, asking for extra help, investigating the disappearance of a local mom missing at sea, who's now aiding in the search for answers. School bus safety. They're supposed to alert your child's bus driver if they're left behind. But CBS 12 investigates the sensors meant to keep your loved ones safe are being disabled by the very people supposed to be using them. This is CBS 12 News at 5. A South Florida super soaker. The storms tapering off after hours across our area. Let's take a live look at the CBS 12 storm track radar. The worst of it moving off the coast right now, but we're not done just yet. Sky Team 12 hitting the air to show us how big this flooded area is. We'll turn on our rooftop cam and you can see dark skies. This right here, this is the road that leads up to the mall. And back there behind that caution tape, yeah, that's the mall parking lot. Bringing you breaking news by land, air, and now sea. Starting today, we will be using Marine Watch 12 to bring you the sights and sounds of Sunfest as it kicks off tonight. CBS 12's Greg Angel is live on the water with a warning from festival organizers. Greg? Yeah, that's right. First of all, I got to tell you, we've got one of the best seats here. Check out the view from one of our half dozen onboard cameras. You can see uh, the band here on the main stage. That is Sun Ghosts performing right now. Weezer, the headliner on this stage. Snoop Dogg, the other headliner on the second stage here tonight. And organizers say if you are one of the some 175,000 people coming out in the next five days, you need to make sure you've got the right ticket. In the meantime, we have reached out to the Boynton Beach Police Department. Just feet away from I-95, there are layers upon layers of dry dead plant material. You have a crucial role in playing as well. Tonight, CBS 12 investigates. Got beef? I just feel like I'm being robbed. Are you getting what you paid for? We put ground beef to the fat test and the results may be a little hard to swallow. Ever been in a police lineup? If you have a Florida driver's license, you may have already been in one. Wow, that's, that's wrong. The virtual lineup created without your knowledge or permission. How secure is your front door? CBS 12 shows you an easy way to keep your home safe, and it only costs $1. This is what's going to save you. The $1 solution to keep burglars out of your house, your family, your health, your safety. CBS 12 Investigates starts now. Welcome to the 11th edition of CBS 12 Investigates. I'm John DeCepolo. And I'm Liz Quirantes. Thank you for joining us. Are you here against your will? Young women. Excuse me, what are you oh, doing in here? Sight, 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 sight. Selling sex. Are you guys engaged in prostitution here? No, ma'am. What kind of services are you offering Body here? Wrapping. But okay. that's not what hidden cameras caught just seconds earlier. Are you engaged in prostitution here? No. What are you selling here? Can no. you tell me what you're selling? Private investigator John Rohde took this undercover video of sex for sale. When I walked into the place, she immediately said it's $200 for a half hour, $400 for an hour. And I said, well, what is that for? She said, any type of sex you want. A vacation turned deadly here at this Key West intersection. This is where beloved and well-respected Delray Beach police officer Christine Braswell lost her life in a scooter crash last month. I've worked a number of scooter and motorcycle crashes. Key West police officer Joseph Stockton says scooter operators are usually not at fault. Instead, it's distracted drivers. People riding uh, motor vehicles and, and cars and trucks and SUVs, a lot of times just don't see the scooters. And because scooters are not considered motorcycles, drivers are not required to have insurance. Do you think there are situations where the Baker Act is being misused? I don't think it's being misused. I think it's being misunderstood. That incident and the fact he was committed will stay on Jaheem's medical record forever. The annual Department of Children and Family Services report shows Jaheem is just one of 32,000 children in Florida taken into custody under the Baker Act last year. The number increasing nearly 50 percent over a five-year period, with Palm Beach County going up 80 percent. We currently have a law that is the, in my opinion, the single biggest source of human rights abuse in the state of Florida. Breaking right now. Chaos erupts at the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. There was reports of shots fired and possibly people injured. Five people killed, multiple others injured when a gunman opens fire in the baggage claim area. 
Passengers forced to drop everything and run for their lives. Some lady was yelling for help down in the garage, so I just ran. Live team coverage of the deadly shooting starts right now. CBS 12 News starts now with breaking news. Welcome everyone. Right now, Fort Lauderdale Airport remains shut down. Travelers corralled inside and outside. All roads going in and out of the area are closed. Here's what we know right now, folks. Five people are dead, eight others injured and now being treated at the hospital. The suspect who opened fire in baggage claim is in custody at this hour, and we've just learned that he flew to Fort Lauderdale from Alaska, checking the murder weapon in his luggage. Now tonight we are covering all angles of this story. Our live news crews are spread out across South Florida at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport, the hospital where those victims are being treated, and here locally at Palm Beach International. We begin with CBS 12's Mike Magnoli, who is live at Fort Lauderdale International Airport tonight, where there are many emotional reunions going on right now. Mike? Liz and John, I'm coming to you from 2nd Avenue and 34th Street, and this is a holding area that the Fort Lauderdale Police Department is directing people to reunite with their family members. So this is folks that were on planes or in the terminal at the time of the shooting that are now reconnecting with their loved ones. I'm joined here by two gentlemen that actually just left the airport. They were there when some shots were fired. Tell me, what'd you hear? What happened? Um, we checked into the airport from our flight from Chicago, and we heard the ambulance and the fire department going down to the baggage claim. Um, then we were told that Terminal 2 was shut down because there was an active shooter in the building. So we walked back to Terminal 1 and checked in with them in order to get our boarding pass to go to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Several planes that were expected to be landing in Fort Lauderdale have indeed been diverted here to PBIA, and they will continue to accept planes here until further notice. Now, I've been in constant touch as far as security is concerned with the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. Now, they're telling me they have bolstered the security here at PBIA in several ways. Now, they couldn't exactly tell me how or when, but they tell me they are here. A trauma surgeon just came out to give us an update, and he did say that five patients are in the trauma center and two um, have had surgeries. Now, he couldn't go into the extent as far as their condition or their ages, uh, but we can tell you all throughout the day, we have seen several ambulances come and go uh, with people of all ages. He didn't think he'd see us again and that he was running out of the airport, um, was not with too many of his friends. People were all over the place and they were just told, in, told to run. Is he coming? He's coming. There are some people, Chris Jones, can we pan over in this direction quick, quick. We've got some people running away from the airport. This looks like that Fiji trip. Um, Sorry to interrupt that woman's interview, but obviously she doesn't want to talk to me anymore. She wants to hug her son, and you are going to see that. Live pictures here. This is a mother and her son who was supposed to be getting on a plane for an international trip, and those shots rang out moments after he was dropped off at the airport. He's got style, he's got personality, and he has a heart for serving others. What he's missing right now is a family to call his own. Meet Angel in this week's Forever Family. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you look amazing. He is quite talkative. When he gets to know you, he warms up. He wants to talk about everything. I got a stripe and a black bow tie so I can look nice. He's really, really thriving and he's, he's coming into his own. I'm funny, I'm goofy. Million dollars. <laughs> million dollars. <laughs> He's caring. He loves sports. He is respectful. He is thoughtful. I do hope that he graduates high school, that he goes to college, and he can become a state trooper. It's, to me, I watch one of the videos on YouTube, and I wa watch the state troopers. It's kind of like the army to save the country and to help people. Each week, CBS 12 surprises a worthy teacher and doubles their classroom supply budget. This week's winner helps students learn life lessons. CBS 12's Terry Hornstein went to Okeechobee County to find out what makes this teacher so special. 
Jennifer San Angelo teaches sixth through eighth grade at Yearling Middle School. Her goal is to make sure her students are prepared for years to come. Need regular coffee. Regular coffee? Yep. Why is coffee brewing in Jennifer San Angelo's class? Hi, right, good job. Go ahead and put it on the cart. The students make and deliver custom coffee orders that the teachers place. Jennifer teaches varying exceptionalities for students learning at different levels. She designed the small business as a tool to help her class learn practical life skills. All students need life skills, whether they're in the gen ed population or not. Um, and sometimes these kids get forgotten about. Jennifer won Teacher of the Year for Okeechobee County, and now she's this week's CBS 12 Tools for Teachers winner. Irma is slamming the entire state of Florida. You are watching continuous coverage of Hurricane Irma. It's been incredible to just see how the uh, conditions here have intensified over the past two hours. I can tell you within about the last 15 minutes, the wind here has picked up tremendously. Now this morning, US-1 was flooded with three to four feet of water. As this storm continues to move forward, these are the kind of conditions we're anticipating to have through late tonight. It's so crazy. I've never seen anything like this, and I'm a Floridian. So this is this is what the surf looks like right now. You don't often see our surf look that white. It's basically just white everywhere. And take a look at this downtown shot. It's from our crevice cam, and those gusts and, and those bands are moving through with quite a bit of ferocity. Well, right now we are monitoring the roads as those feeder bands move in. Meteorologist Kate Wenzel has been in Storm Tracker 12 all day and evening. Right now, she's in Jupiter. Are you in Jupiter right now, Kate? Yeah, Liz, you got it right. We are in Jupiter. In fact, we're on US-1. Uh, we're headed southbound. We're, we're right in the middle of the road, and uh, there's not any cars out here. Uh, actually, just as I said that, I saw one guy headed north. But as you can see, these uh, large tree branches down across US-1, uh, so basically impassable at this point. 561-882-0859. Right now, when we put that number on the screen, we get a huge influx of calls. So if you're going to call right now, and you can't get through, just keep on trying. We will get to you. Remember, we've been talking to you about the possibility of tornadoes here with this cell. So the, uh, the tornado warning is from Deerfield Beach to Boca Raton to Delray Beach to West Delray to West Boca to West Boynton all the way to 441, Boynton Beach all the way up to Green Acres. That's the tornado warning box. Let me read you what the National Weather Service says. Severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located seven miles east of Pompano Beach. It's probably on the beach right now because it's moving at 90 miles an hour. It's moving northwest at 90 miles an hour. That's a live shot of Marco Island as the eye wall begins to move on shore. I want to show you the bay right over here because this just speaks to the power of Hurricane Irma. This would normally be a lot more water. If you take a look over there, if we come left a little bit, that should be underwater. If you look at the docks over here, you look how low the water is. That's because so much of the bay has been sucked out so far. We can see the flames ramping up very quickly. You saying this started as a car fire. Is it possible that this is now ignited onto something else, a structure maybe? That looks like a yeah, lot this, of Yeah, this fire. could be. I, I believe the, uh, the information we got from our assignment information we got from our assignment desk was that uh, there was a, a car fire, possibly a power line had started this. Um, this is this is turning into something quite enormous. And again, the wind, wow, you can see how the wind is just erupting. It's causing this to spread so quickly. CBS 12's Chris Jones is live in Lake Park with an active scene there. Chris? Yeah, you guys are looking at it live right now. We are at, at US 1 in Park Avenue. And uh, I think you can see what we can see, and that is uh, it looks like a palm tree up against a transformer. Can you see the flame, guys? Come around here and I'll show you how amazing this is and how uh, forceful Irma was along this stretch. Completely bent metal there. Uh, the, the sign just collapsing over the interstate. Look down there, uh, Don, if you could. The, uh, the, the metal mountings, I guess you would call that. Uh, just the, the metal just got ripped right off of that concrete mounting, I should say, and the sign was toast from there and just kind of twisted around from there and bent that metal uh, so the sign would fall over the interstate here. So I'm sure this is one of many examples of cleanup tomorrow. We see a lot of uh, 
debris over uh, the, uh, the roads and people's neighborhoods. Not letting evil win tonight. Orlando is strong by the thousands. You're looking live at the Pulse nightclub where people are gathering for hope and healing one year after 49 people lost their lives. Tears, hugs, and candlelight, an estimated 50,000 people coming together for a touching lakeside vigil honoring the victims, the youngest, just 18 years old. Tonight, the city beautiful is coming together as friends, mourning the past and looking ahead to the future, honoring those who were lost. We have live team coverage tonight across Orlando. We begin with CBS 12 anchor Eric Roby live outside Pulse Nightclub right now where a ceremony of remembrance is underway. Eric. Liz, I keep getting goosebumps out here tonight listening to the beautiful, heartfelt music that we're hearing from uh, this very last event of the day. Let me step out of the shot here so you can see what's going on. This is uh, right outside of that last event. It started here at 2 o'clock in the morning. It was packed. And as you can see for the last event here tonight, it is still packed. It's been this way all day long. Inside, behind those walls, we've been seeing dancing. We've been hearing uh, preachers. Uh, one woman ended her remarks by saying love wins and uh, we have been hearing that music as I uh, already told you about. This event continues to go on but CBS 12's Greg Angel he's also here at Pulse and he tells us why this building has turned into something so much more important for the entire community of Orlando. Greg? Well, Eric, you were talking a moment there about the music and the tributes on the wall. And this is also another special part of the memorial here. Little kids, you know, coloring 20,000 hearts, other children uh, making handmade art as well. And just to show them that they too are here wrapping their arms around the community here. Everybody with that focus on remembering those lives lost on that terrible day. The memories of the 49 lives lost are now forever set here. Tonight, people gathering, candles in hand, keeping their gaze locked on the thousands of messages written on the wall, looking the flowers and displays over. I spoke to one woman here. She told me she knew four people who were killed in the attack. She told me what this memorial represents is not the end result of a terror attack, but rather the display of a community's comfort and love for one another. That is something she tells me she hopes the whole world will see. We're getting together. We're getting together. No hate. Everybody's together, hand by hand. No matter, no matter what, if you're straight, if you are lesbian, gay, whatever, we're all working together to be just one family, to be one nation. Like we say, Orlando United. When FAU hired Lane Kiffin, they hoped it would lead to games like the one tonight. The Owls hosting Marshall, a team they've never beaten, with bowl eligibility and a two-game lead in their division on the line. John Evanson was at the huge pregame party in Boca. That's right, Matt. Game nights have become party nights here at FAU more than ever. You can see another party happening right over here as well. Augie, you've been here for four years. Yeah. You're the most senior member of this fraternity. Yes, I am. This is crazy what Lane Kiffin has done, right? Yeah, yeah that's uh, for sure. Lane Kiffin came in from uh, from big school to a uh, small school, and the, the school pride and everything has just been off the charts since he came in. Friday night rivals blitz. This very special rock painted Pahokee blue was put into place a couple years ago to start a new tradition of Pahokee pride. And I think it's fair to say the pride of Pahokee football was back in its rightful place tonight. We go it up the way! The Pahokee crowd more charged up than even a muck bowl game. Hey man, we got it, baby. And they start things off right. Rodney McKay capping off an opening drive touchdown. Go! Seven nothing Blue Devils in front of a home crowd and hometown unlike any other. You know all the feeling in the world that like feel this good. Like it's, it's big. Let's stay with the Pahokee faithful on this one. Recent CBS 12 Athlete of the Week, Tyrone Smith, hits Tyron Arnett for a 15-yard touchdown. The Cowboys got one touchdown back, but McKay helps himself to a two-touchdown lead once again. The cheerleaders poise for a state title game. Finn's taking on the Ravens on Thursday Night Football. Sports Director Matt Lincoln joins us live in Baltimore tonight. And Matt, how tough of a matchup is this going to be for the Finns tonight?
Well, first off, whenever you're playing a Thursday night game, it's tough. It's just four days to get ready. Only one real practice day. That was Tuesday. They traveled yesterday, and everyone's still basically sore since the victory over the Jets.